Lastly, I want to talk about benevolent choices. And again, I, I mentioned earlier that's a, an interesting choice of words that we don't hear very often. But to me, a benevolent choice is using all of our values, using our integrity, and combining that together to make choices in our everyday life, in our relationships, in our media choices, in our internet use, that lines up. It all lines up. And it's not just considered on what we want. When we are making benevolent choices, we see the world with a wider lens, and we take into account what kind of effect does this have on my dating partner, my husband, my children, my, my office, my, my home? We, we take a wider lens at it. And, um, you know, it, it's recognizing this idea that truly this ripple effect, every choice we make, every click on a mouse, computer mouse, every purchase we make, the words coming out of our mouth, they have a ripple effect. And you're being at this conference today and then going out and sharing some things that you've learned. The ripple effect is amazing, but that ripple effect can be good or bad. And we want to make sure that the ripple effects that we are striving to have that line up with our, our values and integrity are having a benevolent effect on the world around us and the people around us. I want to show you, before we close today, um, an interesting ad. I don't know if any of you have seen the, the Nissan LEAF ad. There's a new car out called a LEAF car. Are you familiar with it? And there's a, an advertisement about with a polar bear, and I love this, and it ties right in with what we're talking about today. So the, these are stills from this Nissan ad. And it starts out with this polar bear that's just floating on this little shrinking island of ice and, and you know, global warming and there's no more ice and, and this polar bear essentially will die because it's having a hard time getting food and, and having enough ice to, to travel. So the polar bear decides to go and thank someone. And so the polar bear leaves, finds a way to get to land and starts walking, walking, and, and the whole ad is seeing this polar bear traveling. And he finally gets to the city, and he's going through the city on the streets, and he eventually finds the owner of, an, of a Nissan Leaf car and hugs, hugs this car owner. And the message that I get out of this ad is that this car owner's choice in having this environmentally friendly, small, compact, fuel-efficient car it doesn't just affect the car owner. That those, those choices ripple out and they are affecting polar bears on the, you know. Now we, we can take this example in many, many different directions. And I actually, I contemplated doing a slide series like this with the impact of pornography, but I, I just could not find images that I thought were safe and not triggering in any way. Um, but it is true that when we click on that mouse and we, we download or we view any image that is sexually explicit or exploiting, we are creating a ripple effect that we, that, that car owner does not see the polar bear, right? He's living comfortably in the city, going about his own business, thinking, hey, look at my new snazzy car. Um, aren't I great? I love it. He's not thinking about the polar bear on a shrinking ice field. He's not thinking about that. And that's the point, is that when we are trying to make benevolent choices, we do try to expand our thinking to who is impacted by that click, that choice, that, that conversation, and doing our best at trying to make sure that those choices lead to compassionate and benevolent purposes. Because when we are in an addiction cycle, or even a self-centered cycle, our life is very imbalanced. It's very lopsided. And someone who's in an addiction mode, there's that narcissistic sense of self. It's overwhelming. Their choices focus on the self. They're not thinking about the children that are being exploited. They're not thinking about the supply and demand chain that they are supporting and voting for when they click on that mouse privately in their room. 
They're not thinking about the, the global impact of all of those choices. Whereas when our life is more in a benevolent, balanced place, if you can see that center spot that overlaps ourself, others, the world, God or a higher power, if you're in a 12-step group and that is a value to you, that benevolent place right in the middle where we take into account more than just ourselves when we are living, when we are dating, and that that is really where we can um, find greater health and meaning and make a difference in the world around us. I want to... right before we finish, ask some self-reflective questions related to benevolence, and then we will wrap up. Who is hurt when I implement and live my core values? And that gets tricky. That gets really tricky sometimes. I think of some of the changes our family has made with food that we purchase or don't purchase or where we purchase it from, um, really trying to make responsible choices. And, And we need to do that with our media use, too. Who benefits when I implement and live my core values? Who is hurt when I step out of my values? Think of the person you most respect, and what would he or she say about your choices in a particular area of life? Think of the person you most, most respect, and what would they say if they saw your media profile? Would you feel embarrassed? Would you feel okay with that? How how would that impact you? And who is on your board, your personal board of advisors? I know in my mind, when, I, when I'm really stuck with a big problem or something I'm trying to figure out, I will mentally envision there's four or five people I respect more than anyone. And, and I will mentally envision a board meeting with them. And I go around the room and, and really ponder seriously what each of those people would say to me. And... Um, So who is on your spiritual or mental uh, board of directors when you are wrestling with decisions? Finally, these are key resources that I think are specific to singles that I really support. The SA Lifeline handout, which we've, that contains all the tables that we showed today. Fight the New Drug, who is well represented at the conference today, and boy, they are just doing amazing work for college students and, and young adults all over the country. I, I, they have my full support. The Love and Fidelity Network, some of you may not be familiar with them. I don't think they have come to Utah yet for a conference, but they, um, they're based out of Princeton University and focus strictly on college students and promoting values of virtue and um, clean media. And then also, several years ago, uh, when I spoke about singles here at this conference, the um, Deseret News and Church News did an article called Distorting Relationships, and that you can still access that for free online. Um, that was published December 1st, 2007, um, and the link is there. So those are resources that I hope can help. In closing, I just want to issue an invitation again that all of us, each one of us, that we strive to live a life of awareness that we strive to live a life of clarity around our values, of integrity, and of benevolence. And I know that as we we strive for that, that it will infuse and and give a foundation to our discussions, those tough discussions in our dating relationships that will go a long ways to living a porn-free life individually, but also as couples. And I thank you again for being here and allowing me to be part of the conference. (laughs) 